Hello, and welcome to Powerful Places Podcast. I'm your host, Gary White, and today we will hear our marketing director, Rana Khatib, interviewing Ellen and me about the origins of the Powerful Places series. This podcast is available either in audio form or with video, so take your pick and let's get started. Hello, and Gary. Thank you. Um, Gary, I have a question for you. How did you conceive the series, Powerful Places Guidebooks? Well, we were getting ready to come to live in Spain. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking, what is my project going to be? What am I going to be doing in Spain? I'm a, a long-time composer and... Uh, I always have to have some kind of creative project. Mm -hmm. So I began thinking of what my creative project might be. And I thought about when we were here before, all of these powerful places that we had come to. Mm -hmm. uh, And I thought, we'll be traveling to those places again. Mm -hmm. An ideal project would be a book on powerful places. Mm -hmm. So that's how the series came about. I started by uh, having the uh, worked with a designer, and we designed cover and uh, did all of the uh, design work even before we came to Spain. And then uh, when we got here, we began uh, looking at which place was going to be first. And we, we did actually three uh, books uh, as a group at the beginning. Mm-hmm. So you started thinking about this in 2008, because we yes. came to Spain at the very end of 2008. Yes, mm-hmm. I came yeah. to Spain with this as a project. Mm-hmm. And it was originally my project. Mm-hmm. Ellen was uh, doing editing, and she did photographs, uh, but it was Gary's project at the beginning. <laughs> Ellen, my question to you, um, what was it that you got interested in powerful places? Oh, you know, I don't know when I started getting interested. I know I walked the Camino de Santiago mm-hmm. the first time in 1982, mm-hmm. but I don't think I understood much about powerful places mm. at all. Mm. The, the earliest clear memory I have of powerful places is I think it was in 1997 or uh-huh. 1998, mm-hmm. uh, and Gary and I were traveling in Brittany in north uh, western France, okay. and I'd heard about Karnak, mm-hmm. and I knew there was a Karnak with a K that was in Egypt, mm-hmm. but this was with a C, and all I knew was it was standing stones. Mm-hmm. And I thought, well, huh, okay. So we drove up from Spain, we were living there for a year, and we drove up into Brittany, uh, in northwestern France, and we mm. drove sort of out into northwestern Brittany, and then mm. towards the the uh, towards Karnak. Uh, and we rounded a corner. Uh, the road was flat, and there were trees all around. And then suddenly, we came into the village. Just before the village, I looked, and there were these rows and rows and rows and rows and rows mm. of standing stones. Interesting. Mm. And they were behind a fence. And I said, oh, my God, mm. what is this? I, and I said, Gary, pull over. And he just, <laughs> you know, and he pulled over and parked by the side of the road because these were right by the side of the road, protected by a, uh, a metal fence. Mm. And I sort of walked over and I sort of peered through, the, you know, clung to the fence and looked over. And I thought, what on earth is this? Oh. And these stones varied in height from maybe knee high to taller than Gary, you know, more oh, than wow. two, uh, two meters. Mm. And um, and they go on for several kilometers, mm. so more than a mile. Mm. And they are some places ten rows deep. Mm. And you just look at this and you go, what on earth mm. was this about? Wow. And we mm. had trained as labyrinth facilitators, and I was writing articles about labyrinths, which are a kind of powerful place. 
And um, we hired a guide, went to the tourist office, hired a guide, because I said, I got to know what these are. <laughs> and he started taking us around. And I later wrote articles about this. But that's my first, what on earth was this for? What is it? Oh, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. And then we started studying with mm. geomancers and dowsers and started learning about sacred geometry so we could better understand these places that we started to go mm. to and mm. experience. Mm. And now actually my question to both of you. How has the series developed over time? Huh? Yes. <laughs> uh, we started out... I, I started out was mm -hmm. going to be my project, uh, and I thought, well, we know that there is, uh, there are these places in Scotland. Uh, we know that the Caminos de Santiago, the the uh, road across Spain, mm. uh, there are many powerful places there. I wanted to have at least. Uh, two or three books that I could finish mm. together. Mm. Uh, so uh, I set out to uh, write about Scotland. We had the pictures already, and uh, and I began to write, and Ellen began to edit. Uh, Scotland, the uh, Caminos de Santiago, and uh, the third was Catalonia. Uh, Catalonia. Mm. Mm. Um, so I finished the first two mm. of those books, I believe. Uh, I finished uh, the Camino's book and uh, and uh, Scotland, uh, and I put those out at the same time. Mm. Mm. Um, and we, in the meantime, had moved from northern Spain down here to Catalonia, mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, so we, uh, I wrote the uh, the third book in the series. I uh, started on uh, Brittany, mm. uh, and Ellen uh, said, "Well, really, I am the one who has all of this information about Brittany. Maybe I ought to do a bit more mm. of the writing." Mm. Mm. Which I thought, "That's fine as long as uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Ellen is, Ellen is much better writer than mm -hmm. I am." Uh, so I, I was, uh. we, we, we uh, uh, shifted responsibilities a, a bit. Uh, Ellen sometimes says that I roped her into doing uh, the, the rest of these books. <laughs> <laughs> well, Gary's plan was small little books mm -hmm. that were in no way comprehensive. Mm -hmm. And that was just great. And we said that's what they are. You know, they mm -hmm. point you to how to experience this sacred sites and powerful places. They're very specific, and they're in no way comprehensive. Mm, mm, no problem. Mm, mm. I set a page limit. Yeah. Uh, that was 120 oh, pages. Oh, yeah. That oh, was going to be it. Well, mm, but then mm. I, I got involved, mm. and I'm sort of obsessive and compulsive about this kind of thing, and I have a background in comparative religion, and I'm interested right. in myth and legend, and so it just grew. And, mm -hmm. and also, when we would travel, I would do all the research. Mm -hmm. So deciding where we should go and what places we might want to look at. So it made sense that since I had all this information, I would do more of the writing instead of saying, oh, well, Gary, but you left this out. <laughs> and, you know, it's like, what? It doesn't make sense. So they got bigger. And then Ireland I did completely. And then the last one, Wales, is this massive tome mm. of 300 and... Mm. I don't 75 know. pages, 375 I think. I mean, it's like, an, yeah. it's like an encyclopedia of legends and, and myths. And, and even so, it barely scratches the surface on whales. But it just, you know, how do you decide what to leave out? And we felt whales had never really had uh, this kind of comprehensive, sacred, powerful places guide that linked it this way. I mean, there's some wonderful tabletop books, but not a kind of guidebook like this. And uh, so, uh, yeah, I did. I took over. But Gary does the um, the the layout and the mm, design mm, mm, and, mm. and all of the techie stuff. And, mm. right. <laughs> yeah, and in this process, uh, we began, I began to, do, to look at uh, electronic books I and did. electronic mm. versions mm. of these books. So as Ellen was doing more of the writing, 
Uh, I learned how to do Kindle books and mm -hmm. iPad books, and we've now issued uh, many of our books in, in electronic uh, format as well. Not just the guidebooks, Not but just other the, books yeah. that we've written, or I've written on pilgrimage and yeah. quest and okay, journey. Wow. And, mm, yeah. mm, so yeah. we, uh, uh, I took on more of the techie mm, stuff, mm, mm, and uh, Anna Ellen did uh, more of the writing. So that's how it has developed. What is your name? And now you have Power Powerful Places blog and newsletter on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we don't yes. know where to stop, do we? <laughs> we want to hear more about oh. this. <laughs> uh, well, we were traveling in southern France mm. uh, recently mm. uh, and came back to Girona, uh, and there was going to be this conference that took place here in Girona, the TBEX conference, right. which is a conference uh, about blogging. Travel, International Travel Bloggers mm -hmm, Expo. Mm -hmm. And it was here, and we went. And uh, the conference was all about, uh, you have to do a blog, you have to do all of these things. And uh, we were kind of overwhelmed, actually, by, by all of this. Who knew? Who knew? <laughs> Who knew? Right. We hadn't planned on this. But what we did know is that we hadn't really introduced the series to the larger public. Mm -hmm. We hadn't done the publicity work. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we didn't have any intent to become professional bloggers. And I don't want to become a professional blogger. But that seemed to be... Uh, uh, something that would introduce the books to a larger mm -hmm, audience. Mm -hmm. And uh, a newsletter uh, in the same way. So we decided to go ahead with this uh, blog and newsletter. And, yes, and then it became so clear that the purpose wasn't just promoting our books, mm -hmm. which is fine. I mean, they're, they're wonderful books. Mm -hmm. And when we tell people what we write, they say, oh, I wish I'd had that when I was in mm. Scotland or Wales. Mm -hmm. But anyway, but it isn't just about promoting the books. It's, it's about sharing, for me, about sharing my passion and my excitement about powerful places and transformational journey. And I'm really, really excited because it's turning into a forum for other people to post we have guest bloggers, who, which broadens our expertise and depth of coverage and allows other people to write about their experiences at powerful places and share that with a different audience. Beautiful. And I, I'm just so excited and I'm so happy about it. <laughs> I can see you beautifully. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you can see this mm. uh, all kind of developed mm. step at a time. Mm. And uh, it, it was like... Some kind of blind walk, I guess. <laughs> we we take a step and we look around and oh, there's something else that that opens right, up and something right, else opens right, up and right. it just keeps doing that. What is journey? Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you for for your questions. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Go to www.powerfulplaces.com or www.powerfulplaces.info to learn more about us, Ellen Aviva and Gary White, and the Powerful Places series. <laughs>